Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KitBadger.com out here for another gear review and today I'm talking lasers. This guy right here, which is the Mall C1 Plus by B.E. Myers. So what is it? What does it actually do? Well, it is a unit that has a visible green aiming laser as well as a infrared aiming laser and a infrared diffused illuminator. What does all that mean? Well, up here, we have this propeller cap. We turn it one click and we're on visible. So when we depress this, we get our green laser and we can use that for shooting or for basically designating a target, getting other people's attention to it, signaling things along those lines, whatever you wanna do. Then one click further, all the way over rather, infrared. So when we're in infrared and we press one of our fire buttons. Again, we have our infrared laser visible through night vision. And we also have that diffused infrared laser illuminator. What does that mean? So when you have infrared illuminators, typically they're either gonna be a diffused laser or they're going to be a LED basically. And with a diffused laser, Typically, you can illuminate a lot more further out, like push it further out, but then it comes down to how is it set up? Because honestly, some, yeah, like it's a diffused laser, but they do not work very well. So we'll jump into this guy. For starters, switches, housing, settings, things like that, this body itself is actually made out of aircraft gate aluminum, hard coat anodized and it's really cool with just the way it mounts so there's one screw up here and in all fairness when i first put this thing on i was like is that one screw like is that going to hold it and yeah it does holds it rock solid but once that's on there you're there and this being integrated the switch with basically the mount itself is awesome on a number of fronts one it's incredibly low profile, lets you run backup iron sights. If you're running those, this optic mount actually has one built in, so I probably won't get killed in the streets, but it allows you to do that. And it keeps everything basically low and close to the bore, which when it comes to getting this thing zero, depending on what type of zero, that is also important. And then in addition to that, really easy to access. And so with that, we have these two fire buttons. There's an A and a B. And then right here, there's a slider switch. So the switch goes up one, and then there's a little piece that you need to depress to shift it all the way up into that third position. So between one, two, and three in those two buttons, there's basically six different settings, but they actually programmed in two more, I guess, where you basically end up triple tapping. So all said and done, you have eight different settings using just these two buttons in the slider right here. And the way this slider works, or these buttons for that matter work too, not so much in the visible spectrum, but when you hop over into that infrared spectrum, one is a kind of a low power, one is a high power, and then you're moving through essentially low, medium, high as well. And that's gonna give you different divergence of your infrared illuminator. So you come into a room, you don't need like a laser on top of a laser. So boom, super wide divergence on that. But then conversely, you go outside and now there's a target well over a hundred meters away and you flip that thing forward, go high and you have a really nice clean tight beam to illuminate in addition to your actual IR illuminator. Something else cool about this unit is it's made for everyone. So on top of having an integrated mount, being very intuitive as far as your buttons and stuff like that, doesn't matter if you're right-handed or you're left-handed. Basically, you can take these in pieces off, this piece right here, and this forward like laser module, and swap them so you can move it from one side to the other. Right now, it's set up for me, since I've been working other strong side, and yeah, been able to shoot it back and forth basically from those two different sides and in addition to that back here if we unscrew this works off of one cr123 battery 
And then there's also a spot to basically put a remote lead. So depending, by way of example, actually shooting this at a 3D night vision course with AMTAC shooting, had it mounted on a SR25. And I was also running a suppressor on there and 16 inch barrel, not like crazy long, wasn't like 20 inch, but I think like a 15 inch handguard or something like that. With that, I, shooting wise, am usually in something like this versus something out here. And so while I could absolutely use the, or uh, run the unit out there at the end, so one with my illuminator, depending on the setting, don't get too much shadow off the suppressor. I don't want to operate it like that. In that being way out here extended, you end up fatiguing faster. So I had it to where it was somewhere comfortable for me as far as hand position, but basically remoted it to a switch by Unity Tactical, one of their hot buttons. That allowed me to basically remote that guy and basically use it off of that. I will say you then still have to basically manually adjust your settings up there if you are gonna do that. But it's an option depending on what kind of gun setup you do have. Which I guess brings us into use. How have I used this? Well, as I mentioned, I had it on my Knight's Armament SR25. I ended up shooting in that three day night vision course. Did awesome. I also actually used it feral pig hunting with my son. We were down there in Texas and I had it set up on that Knight's SR25. He was shooting my Radian Model 1 with the Surefire XVL2 IRC, I believe. And he had his laser illuminator on there, which is that Surefire unit. But the distances we were shooting, his laser absolutely worked, but the illuminator was kind of left wanting. And so being able to have this on my SR25, I was able to illuminate, have my, not only illuminate, but also get my laser on it and be like, hey, do you see it? And he's like, okay, yeah. And together brought down giant feral hog, which was a pretty cool experience. And past that, I've also spent a bunch of time with it, running through shoot house, things along those lines, as well as actually just running the Viz green laser out on the range too. And right here is a little video I made, basically kind of scrolling through, essentially just the different settings, looking out at targets out on the range. Right here at 100 yards, there's a 12 inch gong and a six inch gong. That's on low, moving up to mid hour. to full power. And back in high power. And right there, 300 yards. There's my hold. 
so low low this one has like a low flood for north and then medium flood um, only this definitely has that same near brightness that the surefire does it's really nice i have so low. this is dual low for me i don't have a medium okay and then this is i guess high medium for me so this would be just laser high And the other place I absolutely saw this, kind of made use of it as well, was actually at a three-day night vision course down at Thunder Ranch. While I was not running one of these, some other students were, and there was a time when we basically, we were all online, proned out behind our guns, and we were shooting out at steel at different distances, seeing who could basically get their hits as far as we could out there, and you pretty much saw things start to kind of fall apart whether it was the actual illuminator most of the lasers were pretty good but illumination that was a big one and for my own part i was shooting the xvl2 irc and i think once i got past about like maybe 300 yards definitely at four and 500 yards I needed extra illumination no call, and some someone actually had one of the mil spec malls, awesome. which pretty impressive the amount of illumination it puts down. But even these, the C1 plus incredible. Like there were a lot of people on the line with these C1 pluses, basically oh, illuminating oh, people's targets for them because whatever they happened to have brought just was not doing it wasn't cutting it as far as illuminating the targets so they can make their shots. Okay, so I've been used a number of different lasers and illuminators. Some things that really stand out for me with respect to this unit is basically the switching and the settings, the modes. So on the one hand, switchology is really important and some lasers are just lasers or maybe they're a laser and illuminator, but if they're just a laser, then you're trying to figure out how to use your illuminator and use your laser and go back and forth. I'll tell you right now, it does not work very well. So right here, hit fire, laser and illuminator, both of them, good to go. The other side of it is, it's just easy. You literally have these two fire buttons. So lots of lasers, you can remote a switch, which usually makes it way easier because the onboard switch is basically hot garbage. It's either recessed to where it's hard to get to, especially think gloves, or it's in a way to where if you are trying to press on it, like there's all kinds of other crap on there and you're like, ah, I'm pretty sure I'm pressing on it. And usually it's a giant brick that's sitting at 12 o'clock, which lends to other problems as far as optic height, backup iron sights, all those different things. This alleviates that stuff. And again, with respect to actually functioning this, you ever try and manipulate some of the switches on lasers, like with gloves on, really cold gloves on, or warm gloves respectively, like, almost impossible and then when it comes to actually moving between settings two different fire buttons high low i can move my settings here as well easy or again just even turning this thing on and off really distinct with gloves at night doesn't matter really really handy and then also all of your illumination settings for that diffuse laser turnkey so you're not like, oh, hang on, let me, let me crank this thing like my 1980 mag light and try and adjust the beam. I'm like, no, no, that's stupid. Everything right there, hop between your different settings very easily, take care of work that needs to get taken care of. A lot of people get wrapped up with lasers and they're like, I need mil spec full power laser. Why? What for? At the end of the day, all of your civilian ones are regulated to, I believe, 0.7 milliwatts, which makes them like 
kind of eye safe. So when you turn this on, it's infrared. There's no blink response to basically protect your eyes. So you can end up blinding people with really high power infrared lasers. So this, like every other civilian one, is regulated. Does it matter? No. I will say the illumination on this largely outperforms everything else to include PEC-15. I know some people are going to respond emotionally because they are emotionally attached to their PEC-15. Maybe they're a cloner or they just think it's the coolest thing. Right up to the point you can no longer service it. Or if you try to get service, you found out that that used one you bought was stolen because they're not sold to civilians. Bummer, dude. Honestly, the illumination, the settings, the switching, better. You're like, but the military uses that one. Yeah, they use two quart canteens too. And those suck. Like, not a yardstick. But been really, really pleased with this unit. Ivan, sounds awesome. Is there anything you do not like about this unit? Yes, there is. Again, it's awesome. Switches. I can move back and forth between settings. I love it. Ergonomics, everything. Useful with gloves. But, comma, there's no white light. Do I expect there to be a white light on here? I do not. But, Guns typically need white lights. Ivan, you don't have one on here. You're going to get killed in the streets. Eh, maybe. This is basically dedicated setup for night vision stuff. But pretty much all my guns do have white lights because bad things happen in the dark, whether it's broad daylight and you go into a dark space, whatever it may be, white lights are good to have. So here I have something amazing with great switchology really handy buttons, press them, all that. But if I'm in the visible spectrum, I need to somehow activate my white light, then activate my laser if I'm gonna use that as well. Bummer. What if through some sort of magic, one of these ports, which right now it's set up so you can use like a Uni button or Unity button, Unity tactical hot button, something like that to remotely activate the unit both spectrums. What I want is basically one of these ports back here come out and go to a white light. So when I click this thing over in a visible spectrum and I mash that button, I get my green laser in my white light immediately. Already have great switchology, my buttons, perfect. Boom, both of them right then and there. Then when I slide on over to the IR spectrum, it basically locks out my white light. So now, no white light ND, anything like that. Press, I get my IR, illuminator and laser. Again, back to the visible spectrum. Slave white light to the switch, which would be amazing. Hop back to off, everything's locked out. No white light NDs. That would be the coolest thing ever. If you're getting into the world of night vision, this is probably the best thing going in my experience. You have a green visible laser, IR laser, really amazing IR illuminator, and on top of that, super streamlined package, ambidextrous, easy to switch through settings, ergonomic, all of it. Thing is really cool, just turnkey rad package. And having that viz green laser, it's actually slaved to your IR laser. So when you go to zero this thing, you can zero it during the day with your green viz laser. And then you go back at night, your IR laser is also zeroed, which is handy. And as far as adjustments, I wanna say 0.3 mils or about one MOA per click. And there are clicks. Unlike some lasers where you're just like, I know I'm putting input. I know this is doing something. I have no idea what it's doing. This, the clicks, actually mean something. There are clicks, which is pretty nice. Price-wise, you're looking at, they're expensive. A little over three grand, I wanna say. Get them directly through BE Myers, as well as some other places. But yeah, pretty much the best thing going in my experience. Pretty rad lasers. And lastly, if you appreciate my content, wanna support it, greatly appreciate it. Whether it's liking and sharing videos or 
go on over to kitbadger.com, kitbad target pads, stickers, patches, things like that, or supporting me directly through Patreon helps me go out and create more content for you. And over there on Patreon, get early access to videos, some exclusive content, and active Discord. If you have questions for me, happy to answer them over there. And yeah, as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.